Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael Ecom II, and with me, as always, is... My name is Sesame Foreman Encarta. Alright, good name, good name. A very, uh, um, strong name. <laughs> the, the type of name that instills confidence. And yeah, leadership. I think so. it's yeah, it kind of rides the line between you know, like super powerful, and it's got you know a little bit of softness to it. So it's kind of like a good, like a good like mixture, you know. Be a good superhero name, Four Man. Oh wait, Four Man. <laughs> yeah, Four Man. There's you actually like... his his cousin Three Man, and is that? <laughs> he just uses his forearm as like his his weapon. <laughs> That's all I could do. His forearm's like really strong, but nothing, nothing else. Nothing else. Yeah. It's like Popeye. Yeah. Um, it's like a weird. That's yeah, a weird power to have. You know, it's kind of <laughs> useless, but you know, it's something. So, oh. well, there's 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 worse comic book characters in the DC and Marvel universe. Oh, I know. Okay. Like, <laughs> what was a dude? There was a guy named like Armless Legless Man or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Literally, that was what it was. <laughs> And like he only, I think he was only in like one issue or mm-hmm. something, and he like wanted revenge against something because I don't know he invented some kind of toxic. I don't remember what it was, something know. like that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was it? He was only in I think I think it was I think of Moon Knight I think, and uh, I don't remember. But yeah, there's lots of weird like like D list or F list <laughs> characters. There should be there should be like a a. a... I mean, I'm sure they, they've got things like this in, in the DC and Marvel, you know, lexicon of books and stuff, but there should just be one that just the book's just called Frank. And it's just a guy named Frank. <laughs> he yeah, that's it. goes to his job and does normal things and, you know, goes on a date and goes to dinner and different things, you know, that normal people would do. And all while this is going on, you see in the background, you know, superheroes doing their thing. So his superpower is that he like observes other superheroes. No, he just doesn't even notice them. It's just happening okay. around. <laughs> he just, <laughs> it's just in the background. Yes. Okay, I guess that's something. I don't know. But... Yes. But speaking of people with superpowers. Yeah. Um, there's this really interesting superpower that people have sometimes where they take a TV show from one country and transplant it to their country. Oh, okay. And remake it. Sometimes I mean, while that... the, the original show is still on the air, even. I mean, is that a power? It's interesting. I mean... Oh, it, it's... It's it's a power. Okay. Um, And in this case, the, the people with the power worked at ITV in London. <laughs> um... And they took the American sitcom that '70s show, created by uh, Bonnie and Terry Turner and Mark Brazil. Bonnie and Terry from the Toledo area um, of Ohio. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why in the that '70s show, the town is called Point Place. Oh, okay. Because there's a section of Toledo called Point Place. So. Yeah, they also were writers on, um, they, they also, I mean, they create, they were also the creators of, uh, of, um, Third Rock from the Sun. That's why it takes place in Ohio. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, anyways, the, the town in that show is loosely based on Bowling Green, but, um, that's neither here nor there. What we are covering is a show called Days Like These. 
which is a Amer- uh, British version of the American sitcom, That 70s Show, which aired from... Uh, aired for 10 episodes. Mm. It was canceled after six. They produced 13. Only 10 of them aired. And it ran from February 12th to July 14th of 1999. And pretty much every episode was just a script of uh, an episode of uh, that 70s show redone. Almost verbatim. So, yeah, so that started like pretty much the same year then that that seventy show did. That seventy show premiered like a year before. So oh, okay, yeah, like ninety eight then. Or but something. uh, okay. but but it was interesting because um, I was reading some interesting trivia about one of the episodes of um Days Like These that was based on an episode of that seventy show. Because they had gotten the scripts from them, actually aired five weeks before the American version of the episode. Wow! Because they got to it in their lineup first. So, oh boy! But yeah, it was like maybe a half a year earlier that the other one started. So, okay, yeah, probably in the fall here, and then it started in the winter there. So, yeah. So, initial thoughts here on <laughs> days like uh, these. The pilot, uh, the pilot, that's all we've seen. So Yeah, yeah that's it. That's the only one. Um, I mean, man, like, it feels like some kind of alternate timeline <clears throat> where, like, that's the real show. And it's just like, it's just like some bizarro world. It's just like, it, it, like you said, it was like pretty much the exact same script except for like you know a few tweaks here and there like at one point they're watching like doctor who in the in the garage whereas in you know that 70s show they're watching i don't know some other show or whatever and uh, Bra- brady bunch yeah it's, it's really you know stuff like that's you know inconsequential but uh i don't know man i mean i do kind of like the dad character a little better not not because of the acting, but he's just like he's not as mean as Red. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think it depends. I mean, Red was a mean guy with a heart of gold that you saw from time to time, but like the pilot episode isn't really where you can flesh that out totally, in my opinion, on that '70s show after watching both of them. But you know, but if you watch oh, the whole know. series, yeah. It, but I understand, yeah. Yeah, because mean? I have, I mean, I, I don't think I've watched the entire series, but I have no. watched, you know, yeah. numerous stuff. But, but yeah, I mean, I kind of like the dad character, you know, British version, British dad, I'm going to call him. Yeah. And uh, He's renamed Ron instead of Red. Yeah. Ron, yeah. yeah. But, I, you know, some of them, you know, some of the, the, the cast, just like, for example, like Maguire was supposed to be Kelso. I didn't really care for, it seemed like almost like too exaggerated, mm-hmm. like... Like he was trying to be Kelso too hard. I don't know. And um, I did like the woman that they had for Donna uh, or girl. Um, yeah. For Donna. I mean, she doesn't really look like her necessarily, but, you know, she's got red hair and, you know, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, like I said, it's kind of hard to really gauge because it's the same exact script. But yeah. uh, it, it is kind of bizarre, though. It's like it, it's the same, but like lower budget as well. And yeah. it, it almost feels like um, in a way that you're watching like a Saturday Night Live sketch version yeah. of of that 70s show. And randomly, all the actors have British accents. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, it, it does. Yeah, there's a part <laughs> where like, again, they're trying to mimic everything, like the part where they have like the helium balloons, mm-hmm. like just felt so like forced to mm-hmm. me, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and one of the bumpers. Yeah. The, um, so, yeah, it's a <clears throat> interesting thing, you know, I mean, they obviously were betting on this being a big thing over there, but see, the thing is, I don't really understand sometimes like this, and like we recently covered coupling which you know they tried to remake as an american show sometimes taking 
an American show and then making it your own, like, I mean, I'm, I'm taking an American show or a British show and making it your own, like, like the office did with the, the U S office, like they, the pilot. Yeah. It's pretty much the same as the, as the, uh, British version. But then after that, they decided to branch out on their own and create their own path forward because the episodes aren't the same after that. This, you know, I've seen a few of the episodes. It's been a while. They're they're all, and and the same thing with coupling, the uh, the American coupling took the British scripts and just redid them, <laughs> and Americanized them, and vice versa with this show. It's just like why? I mean, sure, take the concept and that's cool, you know, but then make it your own. Like uh, like Three's Company was a British show. And it started out similar, but they weren't doing the same exact stories as the as Man of the House, the uh, the British sitcom it was based on. So, yeah, I or mean, whatever it was called, I think it was something like that. But that's neither here nor there. So yeah, yeah, because like you know, like there's you know sometimes like subtle cultural differences and stuff where it just doesn't really make sense to just like transplant it into another country. You know, it feels kind of forced, like. Like, um, there's really no difference other than, like, they changed the name of the band that they were going to go see, like, some called, like, Cockney Rebel, which is, like, a British glam rock band. Yeah. You know, whereas in the U.S. version, now I forgot who they're going to see someone. And uh, They're going to see Todd Rundgren in there. That's right, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, for some reason, I couldn't wonder they're going to see Led Zeppelin. That must have been, like, another episode, mm. because I remember a scene where, where yeah. like, where how Jackie's, like, Oh come on! I I like Led Zepp. And you're like, don't ever call them Led Zepp. Yeah. <laughs> Again. And, uh, but um, yeah. So you know they're gonna see you know Cockney Rebel, and um, it does kind of remind me though. So sometimes though, it is kind of bad though when you do change a little bit too much, like culturally. So for example, there is this really cool documentary back in the day I watched. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think it's on Netflix anymore, but it was basically about uh, how Russia wanted the guy who created everyone, everyone loves Raymond to do like a Russian version. Oh, yeah, that's like, a great documentary. They completely changed the character to like, like, well, why is why is Raymond like the main character? Like, he's not like super masculine and stuff. It's like because like that's not his character. Like, you know, yeah. And they kept go log, you know, like basically at loggerheads because of like the differences, you know, like cultural differences, because like they also had like, you know, um, what's her name? Brenda. Is it Brenda? Uh, uh, I forgot her name. Um, Ray's oh, wife. Was... Oh, uh, Deborah. Deborah. Sorry. Deborah. Like yeah. they were like, gonna have her like, like pretty much like all dressed up and stuff just to like do like housework. And they're like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why, like, do you want to, like, dress, like, you yeah, know. I mean, that's a, that's a like, cultural thing, too, like, way that they present things and, you know, that. I mean, it, it's it's an interesting documentary. Yeah, um, it is. If, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Um, I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but it's got Phil Rosenthal taking the show over to Russia to try to redo it. Um, finally, they kind of get it right. But, I mean, the thing is, it's like, where if you if you take the... But like, 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 you know, I think the best example of a, of a remake and a lot of people have their, you know, obvious qualms with the American office from time to time, but they took the character types, the, the archetypes of each of those characters and transplanted them to the U S but they, they went off on their own storyline. That's the, you know, difference, like what I, I have issues here is like, why take the same exact script? I mean, this, this isn't a school play where you, you know, everybody's doing their own version of the odd couple or cr the crucible or something. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's, just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. But uh, anyways, do you want to get into the plot here? I mean, yeah, sure. Okay. So, so what goes on here on this uh, lovely um, pilot episode? Well, since it's you know it's the same script, I'm just gonna do a twofer here. But um, so just like in the American version, they're all kind of hanging out in the garage, or as 
Ron says the the garage or the garage. Yeah, um, and, and the and that that's another difference too. The uh, British version, they're in a garage. The American one, they're in a basement. But that's yeah. that's because there's not really many basements in in Great Britain. So yeah. Yeah, I, I think yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I've never noticed. I've noticed that like in a lot of British shows, there, there's not really a mm-hmm. basements and a lot of <laughs> just I guess how they build houses there. Yeah. Definitely. But, you know, basements are not really great. I mean, they're always no. flooding and shit. But anyway, yeah, uh, it's a whole thing. It's a terrible idea <laughs> to build shit underground unless you have. Yeah, that's why. Like in in southern parts of the United States, they don't have basements, and they also don't bury people underground. Because a lot of times what will happen is people get the bodies end up getting like washed away underneath the ground if there's floods. It's just stuff. right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it's not yeah. good. Uh, so, um, you know, they're, they're hanging out in the garage. Um, their you know, parents are having like a party and uh, Hyde or whatever his name is in the and the British shows, you know, basically telling Eric, like, hey, you know, go to him, like, you know, you know, the parties reach critical mass, you know, 10 minutes, we're not going to be able to get any beers or whatever. So pretty much just go up there, get some beers. Don't really talk to anyone. Don't, don't stare at Donna's dad's hair for some reason. And then, you know, I mean, it's like typical teenager stuff, like yeah. four beers between four people. Like what's one beer going to do for you, you know, but, yeah. Yeah. but whatever it's just like you know um well i'm not sure because i thought eric said he was in college whereas and so he's a little bit older i assume than, no uh, um, i don't no, think they I ever thought, said he was in college i thought i thought he said maybe i just heard it i thought he said um i don't know whatever and uh and so you know he gets what time he, what time they said you're you're still in school um yeah Thought he said I'm in college or whatever. Or oh, no, college. no, he, no. He, he at one time he says I'm close to college. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah, so he grabs the beers. Uh, you know, again, Red or slash Ron. Yeah. Um, maybe Ronald Ronald Weasley. Maybe that's why they he no. wanted to name him Ron. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I think it might just be because he didn't have red hair. Like uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so. You know, pretty much, yeah, you know, it goes the same, you know, it's like, what you got there, Eric? He's like, oh, beer, I just um, found them laying around. He's like, all right, we'll put it back. And then, he's just, whatever. And then, uh, you know, his mom wants him to take the two beers that, and put them in the freezer because they're warm. Yeah, so the racist thing was when they're talking about the fact that they have a Toyota car because of, you know, the gas crisis or whatever. And then Ron says, Something along the lines of, yeah, the, it, this car runs on a rice or something like that. I'm like, whoa. Well, they call and it then, a, a rice burner. That's what they used to call those type of cars. Asian, Asian right, cars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, because of being Asian. But, yeah. I'm like, ow. Oh. And then he's like, um, you know, I, something about the last time I saw a Japanese machines when it was shooting at me or something. And the last time he was that close to one, it was shooting at him. Yeah. Yeah. Which that line is in the American. Yeah. I'm not sure about ice, or I don't remember that, but maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, Eric, you know, he's pretty much just trying to get his beers, you know, down to his friends. And they're talking about going to some concert. Jackie's kind of left out of the loop because um, Kelso slash McGuire doesn't really want her to come to the concert. But she finds out anyway because, you know, Mc- McGuire's kind of stupid and just kind of blurts it out. And then pretty much that's all the episode's really about. I mean, Ron finally gives Eric the car and gives him this whole speech about, you know, the car being a responsibility and, you know, you have to, you know, treat it with respect and all that whole, you know, that whole thing. And then, yeah, they just, they're about to go to the concert. Um, he's like, oh yeah, don't take it outside of Lutton because it's an old car. And then Eric's like, oh, well, I guess we're not going to the concert now. And, they eventually, you know, uh, convince them to go anyway. Same thing happens as in the America version. The car breaks down. Uh, you know, they're talking to the mechanic. You know, they can't can't afford the part. So then he's like, well, you know, give me two tickets to the, you know, the um, Cockney Rebel uh, concert or whatever. You know, I'll give you the part or whatever, that type of thing. So 
it was decided that Jackie and Mc, McGuire would be the ones to not go to the concert because Jackie doesn't really care about you know the band that much anyway. She just wanted to go, you know, to be to be with McGuire. And it pretty much just all plays out the same way. I mean, the dude turns out that he's got a boyfriend and he's at the concert with him. And then they do the whole, like, I got to go to the bathroom, you know, like go together. Cause like, you know, that's what they were talking about earlier. Cause Jackie wanted Donna to, you know, go with her to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, it pretty much ends, you know, the same way with, you know, Donna and Eric are sitting on, you know, laying on top of the car and just talking about the the night and, you know, like a, you know, one one simple act of civil disobedience, you know, made them feel, feel like a new man or whatever type of thing. Yeah. You know, she kisses him just like, you know, you know, the American version. And uh, again, I mean, just pretty much it plays out. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On yeah, it plays out the exact same way. Um, and you know, he's like Donna's, like you know, have a you know, um, you know, have a good night, and he's like, yeah, like I'm gonna sleep after that, you know, after that she kisses him. Yeah. And then says something about you know, well, it'll be better next time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. He's like, when when is gonna be next time exactly? <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty much the same script and everything. Um changes that we have are like you know localisms you know um we also have um so the cast includes i'll I'll tell you who the cast is max rots lee as eric foreman which they kept that name the same yeah trevor cooper as ron foreman instead of red foreman and bryson as kitty foreman which is the same uh you got uh rosie marcel as Donna Palmer instead of Pinciotti for some reason. You got Steve Steen as Bob Palmer instead of Bob Pinciotti. You got Sarah um, Stockbridge as Midge Palmer instead of Midge Pinciotti. I want to point something out here. Hmm. Not to sound crass here. Um, In the original, Midge has a rather large bosom. Yeah. And there's a scene where Eric's looking at her breasts and stuff. The midge in this version didn't have quite as big, so it just seemed like the joke didn't land as well. Yeah, I mean he was still doing it, but it was just um Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. It just didn't I mean I I'm not trying to sound crass, I'm just saying it didn't hit me the same way. Um yeah. so we got Harry Peacock. That is the guy's name. Okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I just think that's a funny name. Anyways, as Dylan Jones instead of Stephen Hyde for some reason. I don't know why they decided to change, like, maybe Jekyll and Hyde. They didn't like the last name Hyde or something. I don't yeah, know maybe. why. Yeah. Um, you got James Carlton as Michael McGuire instead of Michael Kelso. I don't know why they changed that. Maybe Kelso is not a British name. Um, Emma Pearson as Jackie Burgett instead of Burkhart. And then you had Jamie Beck as Torbone Rasmussen. Torbjorn. Tor, Torbjorn Rasmussen. Something, I don't know. It's T-O-R-B-J-O-R-N. Mm. Rasmussen instead of Fez. That one I don't get at all. I don't. Did, maybe they don't have foreign exchange students in uh, in uh, Great Britain because the the funniest joke of that one of the funniest jokes of the the American original is they say, "Oh, that that's that's Fez, a foreign exchange student. Who'd we exchange him for?" Jackie yeah, says, "You know," that. which I thought was funny. Um, that joke's totally not there in the uh, you know in the remake. And, yeah. uh, yeah. And, and I mean, foreign exchange student Fez is short for foreign exchange student. We never know Fez's real name. So, oh, okay. So that, that's a little better than knowing the character's full name, in my opinion. But then again, if they would have taken it off in their own direction, 
and and my thing is is why change some of the characters' names, and not all the characters' names? Like they did, yeah. like like with the Office, they you know it's you know instead of David Print, it was Michael Scott. You know, it wasn't. <laughs> None of the characters' names are the same, so. Or why not just completely change the show altogether and not just do the same exact script? Yeah, I mean, I can most... understand maybe for the pilot like this, you know, yeah. but but the fact that they did it with every episode that they every episode exactly. I mean, I can understand it for like maybe two episodes. I'll give you that. But after that, you know, start to forge your own, you know, path here, you know. It's a little difficult, you know, to watch somebody kind of flounder in a in a remake. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they were decent. I mean, some of the actors were good. I mean, I, I liked the guy that played Eric. He was actually yeah. pretty good. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to say. Um, do you want to um, hear some reviews? Uh, yes, please, because I have I have nothing left I can say about it. So, What's that? I said yes, please, because I have nothing left that I can say about it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, here's one from 2020, February 23rd, from Leechy 1977. Horrendous. One out of ten stars. Incredibly poor casted with actors who look like they are, um knocking on 30 as opposed to the u.s version where the casting was perfect well up until randy in season eight that is uh the acting is appalling there are some very capable actors in the show who went on to have good careers but everything from eric's parents donna's parents to the six main characters was all done so badly the u.s version was there as a perfect blueprint for the show and it was badly messed up no wonder only 10 of the British episodes were aired on TV. It's more like a parody. You can't even call it a rip-off, despite having a near-identical script, because it's so badly done. To call it a rip-off would be an insult to rip-offs. Just avoid at all costs. I wish I did. The U.S. version is incredible, even season 8 when Randy's not in it. Okay. So, yeah. Guy doesn't like Randy in there. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. Randy was the character that uh that um oh uh what's his name? Um Seth Meyer's brother um played. <laughs> yeah, the, the late night host Seth Meyers, his brother yep. um played Randy for the last season, who was the replacement of uh of um Michael and Eric when they both left the show, so. Okay, I, I kind of vaguely remember that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it it was better that they did what they did with they where where they brought him in, and just made him a new character because their original idea was that they were going to send Eric off and he was going to come back looking different. Uh, okay. And originally, he was going to play Eric. <laughs> Uh, like he somehow got disfigured and had to have plastic surgery like a soap opera or something you know so it was just like yeah I'm, yeah. yeah I'm glad that they, they didn't do that so. yeah so um, there is there's a really weird review here that I read that I don't know if it's real or not but I'm going to read it <laughs> I never saw it is the headline. This is by Nick Trigg, 1989 from uh, May 2008. I love that 70s show and found out about the UK remake. And now I want to see it, even though no matter where I look, it apparently, but no matter where I look, it apparently sucks. There are no videos on the internet at all. There are now, but this is, you know, over a decade mm -hmm. ago. So um anyways, if you accidentally have some, please let me know where no and email them to me or put them on a site or something. Thanks loads. Apparently I have to write 10 lines in order to submit this, so I think the UK that UK shows in general are similar to each other. I've never been able to get into a British sitcom. Not that I've tried much. In Canada, 
we get the show Frasier, and he has an English accent, which he doesn't. Um, and I don't even like that show, so I really want to see this that '70s show remake and judge for myself how awful it is. Thanks. Wow. I mean, Kelsey Grammer has an uppity accent, but it's not British. No, it's not. <laughs> not even close. It's like mid-Atlantic, basically, like the fake um, accent that they created for Hollywood. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, here's one that I'm pretty sure is a joke. It's a 10 out of 10 review. <laughs> this is the shit. This is from Gary Cool 12 back in November of 2008. 10 out of 10. It is the bomb. It just shows how brilliant the British culture can change the attitude of a show and make it so much better. If you have seen the American version, you will know how brilliant this show is because the American version is dire. First, you have Eric Foreman, a proper English bloke who portrays as the original American Foreman, but plays the part so much better. Next, you have Ron Foreman. My name, Happy Face. He portrays a much better red than that useless American imbecile Kurtwood Smith. For the rest of the cast, I believe they all played excellent parts in this brilliant production, especially the guy who plays Bob Palmer. In conclusion, I recommend that everyone in America should watch this show because it has the uniqueness where its spin of that 70s show failed to create. Wow. That's got to be Yeah, I think it's probably sarcastic. Yeah. Um... Somebody else, like one other reviewer, is convinced that this one came before the American version. No. Yeah. I don't want to read it because there's no nothing else to the review, really, besides them trying to argue the fact that this one came first. Even though it's easy yeah. to look up that it didn't. I mean, yeah. Because like... basically, I think they're a British person and they're saying that... That 70s show didn't start airing until 2000. Yeah, it probably didn't start airing in Britain until 2000. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get to watch that yeah. along days like these mm -hmm. on the same TV station, probably. So, kind of yeah. Held. So, um, yeah, the, um, it's pretty much all we got on that. Um, I'm looking forward. I mean, I've watched some of the episodes so far of that 90s show, which looks like a lot better, you know, show connected to that 70s show than this or that 80s show, which we covered in the past. So, yeah. Yeah. With Glenn Howerton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what's her name uh, from uh, Supergirl? Yeah, it's right. Oh, shoot. I got her name. I did too, but it's okay. <laughs> the woman who plays Alex. And yeah. <laughs> um, any, uh, any final thoughts here before we wrap this up? Um, yeah, I would just try it out. It's kind of funny to watch just because of, like, I mean, it's not funny, but it's just interesting to to see it kind of just sink, you know? And, it's, um, it's, it's kind of funny, strange, not funny. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would, I, I kind of had enjoyed it just mm -hmm. from that perspective. So, I, you know, I, yeah, I would try it just, you know, to see the difference between the American pilot and the British pilot. Uh, you know, it's on YouTube. Uh, the audio does kind of not sync up near the end a little bit, but it's not really a big deal because who cares? Yeah. And, uh, uh, there, there, there is a handful of episodes on on YouTube, so you know you can check those out as well if you want. I watched them in the past, and it's just, just weird. I know, like the whole time, and it's like I think they're overdressed. Like they're not like like their their wigs look f like wigs. Yeah, that's the other part. Yeah, there you go. I was trying to figure out why they look so weird, and yeah, like their hair isn't like like in the in the original, it was really their hair. For the most part. I mean, I think, uh, like, Deborah Jo Rupp, uh, who played Kitty, she wore a wig. 
but it was, you know, a realistic looking one. It's like sometimes you just, you got to get a wig right for it to work on screen, yeah. you know, because you, you can't have it look fake or that's just going to throw off the whole look of the character. Everything else could be perfect. The clothes, the even the mustache or facial hair. It's just if you if your wig is off, it's like okay, you know it 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 doesn't work. Like the wig party that we had in the United States, you know that didn't work too well. What are you talking about? It was, it was like yeah. <laughs> wearing not that kind of wig, no. Oh, <laughs> no, we're not talking about W H I G. You know, yeah. talking about the. I wanted to start a wig party, but then, you know, it got, it got really confusing because, you know, everybody came over to my house wearing wigs and it was like, oh, no, I was trying to start a political party here, folks. We're they, trying to revamp. Yeah, the wig yeah, party. Yeah, but they, they all came here like, you know, most of them were wearing like those big, you know, rainbow clown wigs and stuff. It was it was well, I guess, you know, yeah. maybe George Santos would join you know, your <laughs> wig party. Um, because... but, 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 but it was kind of a commentary on the fact that most politicians are clowns. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, plus, you know, George Santos being a drag queen is probably the only cool thing about him. But, you know, anyway, so, uh, yeah, uh, I just saw about that earlier. I haven't even read into it. So, um, yeah, he's <laughs> fine. I, I don't really care, to be honest. Like, who cares? Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's just one more thing that he lied about. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I just, like, yep. passed by it because I was like, is this even true? I don't know. You know, so, um, anyway, so, <laughs> yeah, it turned out it is true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, um, so, I mean, the one thing I do suggest people go out there and, you know, find a good American show and go, uh, pitch it to the British people and get them to remake it. And join the wig party while you're at it. Yes. Yeah. If you'd like to join the wig party, you can message me at, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. We don't want to. We're not a political podcast. If yeah. you would like a link to this uh, to this pilot episode we covered, you can you can email me at mike at cullen yeah, yeah. But now I'm probably going to get some email about joining the wig party. So yeah, so um, yeah. yeah. you're going to have to create a whole new email address mm-hmm. just for the wig party emails. I will tell you if you, if if you go to one of our higher tiers on their Patreon, I, I we'll start one. You know, so um, <laughs> if you donate, we'll, we'll, rest- let you join we'll restart the wig party. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it'll be part yeah. of your 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 incentive to give us some money to help support the show. Yes. So we could we could restart an ancient party from like two hundred years ago. Yeah, because you know third parties work out so well in the United States. I and don't know what the ideology was. I don't. Even I don't know. even know. I just know what it was called. So I just know that they existed. Yeah. <laughs> In my version, though, you will. Everybody will have to wear those rainbow clown wigs. So, so yeah, because it's like a double meaning. Yeah, yeah. it's a wig. <laughs> you also have to wear wigs while you're, yeah, you know, deliberating. I guess. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. So just make sure you're not like allergic to like acrylics and and uh, and uh, synthetics and stuff because most of those wigs. Anyway, so um, the uh. Hey. I get one that uses real hair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, they're more expensive. They're more expensive, but they're definitely worth, you know, the yes. extra few, few bucks. That's when you, you know, you when a, when a clown dies and donates their hair to, uh, wait. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, where are we going? Anyway, so, um, <laughs> but, you know, make sure you do check out our Patreon. It really, you know, it's, it's a good way to support the show. Um, share the show. That's a great way to sh- help, you know, spread the word. You know, it's also a good way to spread the word about our new political party. Oh, wait. No, um, the... <laughs> also, um, you know, just, you know, subscribe, you know, subscribe, share, tell a friend, tell a stranger. Yeah. Tell like a political you. candidate. I don't care. Yeah. Tell a political candidate that we're, going to restart the wig party but they're not invited unless we know more about them yeah but, get them uh, get them to listen to the show though get that yeah get them to listen <laughs> you know but yeah if you, if you hit the like button and you know write a comment even that really helps with the youtube algorithm for some reason it will yeah well, I'm, not- I'm, I'm youtube also you know like on any kind of podcast platform like uh 
like Apple and stuff like that, that you're able to rate the show, give us a five star review or whatever their highest rating is. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's five wigs. And, um, Wig, yeah, on, um, <laughs> you know, on uh, wigpod.com, which, which pod- might be an actual website for all I know. It might be like a podcast about wigs. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Why not? I mean, you know, the podcast for everything, it's probably yeah. a podcast like Christmas lights, you know, or, I mean, light bulbs, you know, anything I mean, if like you donate that. to our uh, Patreon, we'll do a whole episode about wigs if you want. Oh, sure. The history of wigs. Why not? And then, um, I mean, come on, history. I love, I love reading about stuff. Yes. But yeah, like leaving a, a comment and stuff, especially on YouTube, it, you know, it shows the algorithm that there's engagement and then that will, that helps kind of just push it out there a little bit. So it might show up on other people's feeds. And, well, yeah, just and subscribe there too. Yeah, that helps out too, obviously. Yeah, so, you know, those little, those three things really do make a difference, you know, to the algorithm. And we gotta, we gotta make sure we appease the algorithm because that's our new God. So, you know, you gotta make it happy, you know. Don't tell anybody, but, oh, sorry. The, but the algorithm is the yeah, head the of the wig party. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that. Oh, shit. Shh. But just don't tell anybody, okay? okay? Yeah, well, I'm good. Okay. But anyways, folks, be good to each other, you know, whether you have a wig or not, (laughs) and whether you wear bell bottoms. And uh, remember that we love you. And bye bye Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com. Thank you.